I love these MMA shoots. It's just one backpack and one camera bag. That's it. I live in Orlando, so I'm gonna be driving down to Fort Lauderdale. It's a three hour drive. And I use the IRS mileage rate to compensate for travel. It's fair, everybody agrees on it. Since the event is gonna end late, I do need to stay over. And I was contacting this company in the beginning of the week asking for hotel accommodations. They didn't get back to me. Eventually it got late and they said, hey, we did not set it up for you, so we'll just reimburse you, but you have to find it. No problem, went on to Airbnb, found a place. I'll be ending this event tonight, probably around 10. Not too bad, but as a freelancer, you really do have to keep tabs on all these small things since you're not for a part of the normal crew. All right, we arrived in South Florida. It's looking beautiful right now. The venue's somewhere in that area. But let me show you what I've been working on. If you've been following the vlogs, you know I want to be able to grab my camera and begin shooting. And I've been able to do it. So for this one, very minimal gear needed for tonight. Monitor microphone battery needs to be slapped on but that's it this is the storage uh solution that i'm doing for the monitors let me see if i can do this with one hand so when i come to the event i will take it off okay i can do it so far and then slide it on and now wait battery got a lot of juice on these And now, it's ready to go. How are you? Hey there. Uh, media credentials for David Morfield. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I need to grab another one of these because they're so perfect and I have more than four cards uh, and it's only six bucks. All right, I got a few minutes. I think I can escape and get a nice coffee and get back in time. I'm all set up, so let's see how quickly this can happen. One of the main deciding factors of getting the FX6 was I was being requested for Sony cameras so often that I was renting them and decided I should have my own. So that's why it's interesting when I get a inquiry like this one it's exactly up my alley, documentary, um, second cam, and they're looking for someone who has an item in the FX lineup. Unfortunately, I'm booked, so I can't make it, but this is exactly how I want it to go. So I guess it's good, even though I can't do the job. Mission accomplished. So today I want to experiment with shooting in the high base ISO, so we'll be at 12,800 which allows the shutter to be at 120 degrees. And for that, we'll actually have to add some ND quarter, and we're gonna keep the f-stop at 2.8. And if I flick it in a false color, um, it looks pretty good, and we're still gonna have some spotlights overhead that'll turn on during game time. I rarely know these fighters' names, so this is the workflow that I created. I go to the Instagram and I take a screenshot of the entire fight card. And then I copy the text from the picture, which is very convenient. And then from there, I open my notes app. I paste the text and then whatever fight is about to come up, I just separate it with a few lines. And then I hold my phone up to my camera and I roll for a few seconds. That way in post-production, I know these are the fighters for the upcoming clips. So getting back to the camera, I'm actually gonna move my microphone back quite a bit because I need to blur out the chain link fence so I have to push the lens up as close as possible and usually my microphone snags. So I'm pushing it back and right now it's actually working perfectly, you know, very simple fix, but you kind of have to think like that when you're in the moment. Unfortunately, sometimes you're just not gonna get the shot. So all I see here is black shorts. And if he had knocked him out right there, I would have missed it. So 
hopefully that doesn't happen the entire night, but sometimes you're not going to be in the right spot. And when you're only one person, that's how it goes. There is a social media filmer here who is dedicated on iPhone, and that is for immediate turnaround reels, whereas mine take a little bit longer. So there is some chance of double coverage, but I found I had one earplug left in my backpack, so I put that in. Unfortunately, my left side doesn't have it in. I don't know where the other one went. I normally travel with two, but the sound stage is directly behind my back. That's what my phone is resting on. So it was crazy loud and it definitely takes a toll on your ears. So I would recommend just playing safe and putting earplugs in, especially if you're doing any type of music venue. Let's go. Here's another new experiment. I am testing autofocus when they award the winner. So normally the whole night is in manual focus, but I actually got the eye autofocus to work and using the toggle to select the subject. Very happy about that. And now that I'm shooting in all eye, since I want 10 bit and 4K, I have to switch out the cards a little bit more. This codec is a little bit more data intensive, but it's still really hard to get the cards in and out of the door with the V-mount. And I have very nimble finger fingers. I thought I'd be able to do it no problem. And this is in between rounds, so I only have 60 seconds. And I heard the, uh, the 10 second bell, the warning bell, meaning the next round is about to begin. And I started freaking out because I need to get this going. I need to have the cards in and be pointing at the cage when I hear the bell ring. So I get it, I turn around, I get my phone set up, and I see someone, I know he doesn't see my phone, and he sits on it. This was a really good fight. I think they're actually gonna get fight of the night. Here's an accidental nut shot, and they were going at it. At one point, I felt some sweat land onto my forehead, and I turned around and the commentator said, hey buddy, you got blood on you. So that sucks, but that is a possibility of being at the bottom of an MMA cage. So here I am pushing the camera in nice and tight, trying to get all that emotion. Usually people's eyeline go towards the big camera, so that just helps me. And I'm staying low because there are a couple live stream cameras above me and I don't want my head to pop into their frame. But fight after fight, it becomes methodical at this point. Now you wanna capture everything at your baseline of high quality. But since everything looks so similar, you may be delivering a very, very similar product to the point that your client might start to associate it with being stagnant and then they'll associate you with being stagnant. So I always recommend to myself, to anyone else, is to try to introduce some creativity because you may miss or you may hit, but your client should notice that you are trying to improve on the last product that you gave them and therefore feel more invested in bringing you in and you're not just here to collect a paycheck, you are here to grow their company and grow your company in a mutual fashion. And my monitor support system is working flawlessly. If you've seen some of the previous vlogs, you know how hard I've been trying to design something that works for what I need. So in this orientation, I have it a little bit more vertical. That way, when I have it in my chest, I don't have to bend my neck over. The eye line is much more straight. And it's just a conglomerate of a bunch of different parts from different manufacturers. Everything is listed in the description along with all my camera parts. And it's just working exactly how I need. And when you get it to that point, you definitely have a sigh of relief. So batteries, um, three flights left and I have an hour left. So I'm gonna switch it just because, and the great part is I get to use this battery to charge my iPhone because it's dying and packing up way easier than on a commercial shoot the gear is so much less love it made it back to the car with three minutes left not bad uh -oh. Uh -oh. there we go Woo. so a little south florida airbnb basically a backyard unit and this is it just an efficiency studio um, I'm only here for the night, so this is all I need. And there is UFC tonight, so I might try to get that on the TV.
my girlfriend is Venezuelan, so she's been showing me more and more Venezuelan food. So for breakfast, we have Tequeño Si Café. Gotta cover the email, but this is a cool one from Production Hub. Being a cam op for four days covering the Ultra Music Festival in Miami. And now I have some Rolling Loud experience that I can throw in there. So hopefully this one's in my schedule soon. As always, I don't like editing, and this is one that requires it. So very simple, 30-second sound bites, and they need captioning on here. So I could do it in Final Cut. I used to have Premiere. I know they have an auto-transcribe feature, but what I'm going to try to do is take the advice from Ruth in my Orlando Filmmaker Breakfast, and she said to use CapCut. And I've never used this app. I'm downloading it for the first time, so... It looks very similar to iMovie, which is what I use to edit these vlogs. And it, I, I like the, the cross-contamination between, you know, professional NLEs and mobile editing apps. I think it's good. They each have their strong suits. And so let's use the auto caption. Uh, it's going very fast. I think this is like a 20-second video. And uh, she said that if you adjust one of the texts it'll what adjust all of the texts okay so yeah we'll just adjust the size about. and the font that type and fix a few typos but that is way faster say, than i would have like been able to do about in final cut things like that part of our role is to help figure out does that make sense what are the pros and cons so it's just about to go to bed and i need to charge these batteries so i thought well, let's just get the first one on here, and then in the morning, I'll put the other one on. And then I realize, double charger. That is very convenient. And it has the time remaining of how long it'll take to charge. So, five hours. And, oh, okay, so it's calculating. It's going down less work. I like that.